We are sending virtual hugs to you from our house, to your house, from our hearts, to your hearts. And we thank God for um, those who went before me in this program. Thank God for the devotion leader. It was powerful. Thank God for our MC. Thank God, wow, uh, for the two elders uh, who did the Bible study. Um, Elder Mrs. Chabaya talking about the power of the mouth. And, um, you know, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. And Elder Sharon coming up talking about, um, you know, the heart. Wow, having a clean heart. I was thoroughly blessed. I was ministered to uh, by the two elders. God bless you so much uh, for allowing yourselves to be used by him. And may he continue to increase his anointing and revelation. Uh, in your life. Glory be to God. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? I'm going to be talking about defeating toxic thoughts. Defeating toxic thoughts. You know, there are sometimes you have a sermon, but this morning I don't have a sermon. I believe I have a word uh, for somebody. I believe I have a message. I'm a postman this morning delivering a message to you that I believe the Holy Spirit has impressed on my heart uh, to share. Uh, we're going to pray uh, before we get into the word. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Oyanda rida bosha tia kasa. Tarata kapia kata rita ye kandia. Shababaya rateke tea bia kato retekea. Kirade dea masapa tea kasha tia. Marete tia manze ndia baya kondaria manda. We thank you, Father. Teach us now. Uh, touch my lips of clay that they might be worthy to declare the oracles of God. Thank you for anointing that makes preaching easy. And revelation knowledge that makes preaching exciting. Thank you for granting that with boldness I would declare the divine oracles of God. For what you have done, what you are about to do, not unto us, O God, not unto us, but unto you be all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Holy Spirit, thank you for bringing all things to our remembrance in Jesus' name. We thank you for making it clear. We thank you for the message hitting home. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. We are talking about defeating toxic thoughts. And today I'm going to be sharing with you from our our spiritual father's book, Messages, Preaching, and Teachings, Volume 2. This book contains uh, some of uh, the messages that our father <clears throat> he has shared over the years. And I believe it's going to bless you as he wrote it, being inspired uh, by the Spirit of God. Our text is Daniel chapter 5, verse 6, and verse 9. Daniel chapter 5 verse 6 and verse 9. Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. Verse 9, then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. So we understand this story is of um, uh, the heir apparent uh, to Nebuchadnezzar's throne, um, who was ruling in the place of his father, Belshazzar, and he threw a feast, he threw a party, and uh, invited uh, a thousand lords to join him to the party. And uh, he, whilst they were drinking uh, with his wives, with his concubines, uh, he commanded uh, the vessels that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the house of the Lord um, and, and brought them to Babylon with the captives. Um, he ordered those sacred vessels uh, to be brought to the feast and they started drinking um, from those vessels. And what happened is the hand, a hand appeared and started writing on the wall. And um, you know, there was no face, there was no body <laughs> just a hand writing on the wall. 
and the hand wrote many, many take off our sin, which means um, you have been weighed in the balance, uh, you have been found wanting, uh, your kingdom has been stripped from you, and it's been given to the Medes and the Persians. So where we've read, the Bible says that uh, the king's thoughts troubled him. The king's countenance changed. His thoughts troubled him. And so the joint of his knees, of his hips were loosened and his knees began to knock against each other. And he was, and verse 9 says, he was greatly troubled and his countenance fell. That is the power of thoughts. The king became troubled. Where did the hand come from? What had the hand written? It was a mystery. It was an enigma. It was um, a supernatural uh, you know, occasion. It was a supernatural, uh, you know, happening. And it, 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 it troubled the king greatly. Child of God, I want to share with you about thoughts because thoughts can trouble you. Thoughts can torture you. You have to realize that the number one thing that the devil, um, uh, that is on the devil's hit list is not your job. The number one thing that is on the devil's hit list is not your job uh, or your marriage or your education. The devil is not after your Twitter account or your Instagram account. Uh, you know, the number one thing that is on the devil's hit list is your mind. The devil is after your mind. The enemy is after your mind. He wants to control your mind. The devil is after your mind. And because... The reason why he's after your mind is because if he can control your mind, he can control your life. The devil's attack on our mind is ongoing and relentless. The devil attacks our minds continuously, perpetually, and relentlessly. As long as we are alive, our minds remain the devil's battleground. Our minds remain uh, the, the, the battlefield. You have to understand that, uh, you know, the enemy uh, is attacking your mind all the time because the mind is the battleground. The mind is the battlefield. The mind is where the war takes place. So you have to realize that what controls your mind controls your life. You have to realize that where the mind goes, the man follows. You know, if the mind goes into depression, the man is going to be depressed the mind goes into failure, the man is going to fail. If the mind goes into sin, then the man uh, is going to sin. Because where the mind goes, then the man follows. Where the mind goes, then the body uh, follows. How you think can affect the trajectory of your life. How you think can affect your destiny. How you think can affect the quality of your life. How you think can affect the quality of your work, the quality of your business, the quality of your marriage, how you think can affect the quality of your life. Remember John 10 verse 10, Jesus came that you might have life and have life in abundance, but as long as your mind is being held captive by the enemy, there's no way you are going to enjoy the abundant life. There's no way you are going to enjoy, uh, you know, the victorious life when your mind is constantly in defeat. There is no way you are going to enjoy the peace of God as long as your mind uh, is in constant chaos or is in constant despair and hopelessness. Glory be to God. So for you to come out, your mind has to come out first. For you to win, you have to win in your mind first. Our father said that it's like when someone is in a boxing match, if your mind is hit, if your mind is, is damaged, you know, then game over. Then the referee will stop the boxing match. That's why you see when boxers are boxing, you know, they, they, they protect their head. Because once your head is hit, once your, your, your head is, uh, you know, has, has taken uh, more than enough punches, you know, then you are just going to faint. You are just going to fall over and you get knocked out. So in this battle that we are fighting with the enemy, you have to protect your mind. You have to guard your mind. Glory be to God. Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 23. 
uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, in the ERV version, easy to read version, says, Above all, be careful what you think because your thoughts control your life. And we know that the New King James Version says, Guard your, 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 your mind, guard your, your heart with all diligence, with all vigilance, because out of it flow the issues of life. You have to realize that the world is in, your, is in your mind and how you perceive the world is in your mind and your perception affects everything. It affects your career. It affects your relationship with your colleagues. It affects your relationship with your spouse. It affects your relationship with your family and with your friends. How your, your perception, glory be to God, it affects everything because the world is in your mind. Most of our problems are rooted in our thinking patterns. I know we blame the devil for all of, all of, all of our problems, you know, especially if you are from Africa. You know, everything, you blame it on, the, on generational cases. You get a flat tire, you say it's a generational case. <laughs> you know, you cough, you say it's a generational case. But a lot of um, our problems are rooted, deeply rooted, in our thinking patterns that produce the problems that we experience. So you have to diligently manage your thought life. Child of God, control your mind. That's what we are teaching here. Control your mind. There are two dangers in life. Uh, one danger is believing everything you think, and the second danger is believing everything you dream. Don't believe everything you think, and don't believe everything you dream. Glory be to God. Because everything starts in the mind. Glory be to God. So don't allow a negative, toxic thoughts to dominate your mind. Glory be to God. Don't allow the devil to take over your mind because it starts as little tiny thoughts. Then it's going to build up into strongholds. And you know that a stronghold is a mental fortress that the enemy establishes in your mind. That is so hard to defeat. But there is hope because the word of God can defeat strongholds in our minds. So don't allow negative, toxic thoughts to dominate your mind. I'm saying don't allow it because, you know, it, the power is in your hands. You have to learn to think on purpose. Don't just think everything that comes into your mind. You have to learn to think on purpose. You need to practice purposeful thinking. Glory be to God. And everything that you don't want to think and everything that you know you shouldn't be thinking about, then you have to get rid of it. That's why the Bible says in Psalms, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my mind, or the meditation of my heart, the word mind and the word heart is interchangeable. When you go to, to the Hebrew word for the word heart, it will tell you that heart also means mind. So it, in a lot of cases in the Bible, it might not be in every case, but in a lot of cases in the Bible, the word heart and the word mind are interchangeable. So the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth um, Elder Ross spoke about that and the meditation of my heart. Glory be to God. Elder Sharon was talking about the heart. It says, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Do you know that your mind can tell you that someone doesn't like you? Your mind can tell you that someone hates you. I remember our father said, if the devil says so and so doesn't like you, he says, I say to the devil, I don't believe you because I didn't hear it coming out of my mouth. You can just begin to think that elder so-and-so doesn't like me or deacon so-and-so doesn't like me. Did you hear it coming out of their mouth? Child of God, it's dangerous to believe everything you think. And it's dangerous to believe everything you dream. Don't believe every dream because it's not every dream that is from the devil. Some of the dreams come from the stuff that we, have, we spend the whole day thinking. You know, and those things come in our dreams and we start believing them and we think that they are divine, they are coming from the Lord. So don't believe every dream. Don't believe uh, everything you think. The Bible says uh, the, the simple believe every word. The simple, when the Bible says simple, it's, it's meaning foolish. It's saying the foolish believes every word that they think. They believe every, um, you know, um, everything that they dream. Glory be to God. So don't allow wrong thoughts to take up residence in your mind. 
or in your head. Don't allow wrong thoughts to make their address in your mind, to make uh, your mind uh, their home, to make your mind their dwelling place. Glory be to God. Some thoughts have to get the eviction notice this morning. Remember that the devil um, projects deceitful, deceptive, insidious, enticing, subtle, crafty, misleading thoughts in our heads 24-7. The devil is a broadcaster. Come on, somebody. The devil is a vlogger and a blogger. <laughs> he runs a 24-hour channel where he just pro projects thought, uh, negative thoughts, deceitful thoughts, deceptive thoughts, insidious thoughts, subtle thoughts, enticing thoughts. And that's his work, is to broadcast negative thoughts in our minds, in our heads. You know, uh, for example, I've seen a lot of beautiful girls who grapple with the thought that they are ugly. And at the same time, I've seen intelligent, capable men who are convinced that they are not smart enough or they are not that capable. And you are thinking, who told you you are not beautiful? Who told you you are not intelligent? Who told you that you are not uh, capable? Who told you that you cannot take care of business? Come on, somebody. It's because of what the devil is projecting in their minds. Some, you know, the devil, if you hear thoughts like, hey, you are, you are ugly, those thoughts are not from, from God. Those thoughts are from the devil. Because sometimes the devil even speaks in first person, not in third person or second person. So the devil does not, sometimes he doesn't say to you, you are ugly. Because you know you are, it means someone else is speaking. But sometimes the devil just says, oh, I'm ugly. In your head, and he's saying that. You know, and you start thinking, oh, I'm ugly. Who told you that you are ugly when the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made? And I see a girl who says, oh, I'm, I'm ugly. No one is going to marry me. Let me tell you something. I've seen some people get married and be happily married, uh, whom the world has, had ruled out. Come on, who don't fit the description of, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the woman's magazine uh, of what, or the people magazine of what it means to be beautiful. I've seen them getting married. It's, it's, it's just a mentality. Child of God, you have to realize that the way that you perceive life can, can, affect, uh, can affect your life. The way you perceive, the way you think, come on, it can dampen your life. Come on, it can quench your fire. Come on, it can destroy your vision. Come on, it can, it can, it can destroy your ambition. Come on, it, it, can, it can cause you to quit and give up. It can ground you. Your thoughts can ground you. A lot of people are restricted not by their abilities, but by their mentalities. Come on. A lot of people are restricted not by their abilities, but by their mentalities. I remember the motivational speaker, Les Brown, he said that the easiest thing he ever did was to make a million or to earn a million U.S. dollars. But the hardest thing he ever did was to believe that he could make a million dollars or that he could earn a million dollars. Yet it was the easiest thing that he has ever done in his life. Come on, somebody. So a lot of people are restricted. They are constrained. They are limited, not by their ability, not by their talents, not by their giftings, but by their mentalities, having a, a poverty mentality. Glory be to God, having a a lack mentality, an insufficient mentality. Let me think, tell you something. If you are constantly thinking, I'm going to get laid off, I'm going to get laid off, you're going to start saying, I'm going to get laid off. And soon enough, you know, you're going to get laid off. That's why the Bible says, if I've thought any wrong word, come on somebody, or, uh, or if I thought anything contrary to the law of God, the Bible says, put a hand on your mouth so that you don't speak those things. So if you constantly think that, oh, I'm going to struggle this month, or I'm going to struggle for the next three months, you are going to struggle because that's what you are allowing to control your mind, and that's what you are allowing to dominate your mind. There are some people who don't see anything good, not because th there's nothing good happening to them, but because of the way they think. There are some people, no matter how you try to love them, they are very suspicious. They are not easy to love because of how they think. Child of God, you have to deal with your thoughts. You have to uproot some thoughts. You have to get rid of some thoughts. 
and you have to fan and encourage and feed the right thoughts. You have to get rid of stinking thinking. Get rid of stinking thinking because stinking thinking is going to lead you to a stinking life. John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Jesus said, uh, you know, uh, the devil is the father of lies. He says the devil is a liar. So don't believe anything that the devil says. And when he speaks, he speaks contrary to the word of God. He speaks contrary to the promises of God. He speaks contrary to your identity in Christ. A lot of people, when you are struggling with, uh, with your identity, you know, it's, it's in your mentality. You know, a lot of people have, uh, uh, um, they, they don't know their identity. They don't know who, they have an identity crisis. They have an identity crisis. They, they, you know, they believe the lies of the devil. Some people don't even know whether they are a man, but they, they think they are a woman, they are a woman. They think they are a man, they are human. They think they are an animal. That is identity crisis. They are believing the lies of the devil. How can you lower yourself to, human, uh, to, to man status, I mean to animal status, yet you are created in the image of God? Glory be to God. So don't believe the lies of the devil because the devil is a liar. He's not going to tell you anything that helps you advance your life. He's not going to tell you anything that's going to help you get ahead in life. Are you getting the teaching? So you have to realize this is critical. I want you to take note of what I'm about to say. It's very important. The first 15 minutes when you wake up are the most critical. Not, not when you have breakfast, come on, not when you have lunch, come on somebody, not when you um, check your notifications or you go on WhatsApp. That's not the most critical uh, time of your day. The most critical time of your day is the first 15 minutes or 10 minutes when you wake up because this is when the devil bombards you with negative thoughts in order to take control of your day. You know, the devil does not show any mercy. Come on, somebody. The devil does not um, agree to truth, to uh, agree to, to, uh, to having a truth. Come on, somebody. The devil uh, is merciless. You know, um, he, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about your life. He's the most negative person to ever exist. So uh, you have to understand that uh, the first 10 minutes is already by your bedside. And he starts by whispering to you negative things. That's why when I wake up, I say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Glory be to God. So the, 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 the critical time you have to be most vigilant uh, you know, in your day is the first 10 minutes of the first 15 minutes that you wake up. Because the enemy is already waiting, you know, trying to set uh, a negative tone for your day trying to set, um, uh, you know, a, a, a negative, uh, uh, you know, atmosphere uh, for your day. So when you wake up, uh, you have to wake up with the word of God in your mouth. The Bible says, uh, let, let the, uh, the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hands. Come on, so when you wake up, you say, I, I bless you, Lord. I thank you, God. You have made this day for me. You have afforded me and privileged me to be in this day. And I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to be glad. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to be miserable. Come on, somebody. I, I'm, I'm going to rejoice. You have to realize that the devil is selling negativity. The devil is selling uh, toxic thoughts. And the devil is selling pollution. The devil is selling uh, mental contamination. Come on, somebody. But we are, not, we are not buying. Whatever the devil is selling, we are not buying it. So you have to realize that everything starts in the mind. The ancestor of every action is thoughts. Come on, somebody. The ancestor of every action is thoughts. Success starts as a thought. Quitting starts as a thought. Depression starts as a thought as a thought, winning starts as a thought, defeat starts as a thought, sin starts as a thought. Come on, even marriage starts as a thought. Come on, somebody. Business starts as a thought. It starts as an idea, which is a thought. So I have heard people say, I think I'm depressed. Come on, they are thinking themselves into depression. I've, I've heard people saying, I think I'm ready to get married. Come on, somebody. Some people say, uh, you know, I think I want to save money. It starts 
as a thought. I think I want to buy a property. I think I want to buy a car. Come on, somebody. It starts as a thought. Everything good, everything bad starts as a thought. That's why Jesus said, uh, he said, it's not what comes into a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the heart. It's what comes out of the mind of the man. That's why Elder Sharon said, your heart has to change. Our father says, being born again means your heart changes. Jesus says, what, what comes into a man, uh, come on, it, it goes into the stomach and it goes into the sewage. But what comes out of the heart? Let me ask you, what comes out of your heart? What is your heart, in your heart? Is jealousy in your heart? There are some Christians who get jealous if they see a, a believer, you know, looking sharp. If they see another believer, uh, you know, testifying of the goodness of the Lord. If they see another believer being used by God. It's just like when you're a preacher, you have to... Uh, you know, guard against jealousy when someone else is being used by God. You know what I'm saying? But some, some people, what's happening? The jealousy is coming out of their heart. But I always tell people that if God is blessing my neighbor, it means he's in the neighborhood. It means you are next in line. I don't want to be in a church where people are not getting blessed. I don't want to be in a church where elders are not getting blessed. I don't want to be in a church where deacons are miserable and they are not getting promoted and their life is not coming up. When God is blessing people in my church, it's a sign that I'm next for the, in line for the blessing because he's not a respecter of persons. So you have to uh, get rid of jealousy out of your mind. Glory, you have to get rid of envy out of your mind. The Bible says don't envy your neighbor's car. Don't envy your neighbor's, ha your neighbor's house. Don't en envy your neighbor's jewelry. Don't envy your neighbor's, your neighbor's dog or your neighbor's kettle. Come on, somebody. The Bible teaches us not to envy. So all these things are in the heart. Suspicions are in the heart. There are some people who are suspicious of other people. There are some people who are prideful. Uh, like Elder Seron was saying, they don't even take correction. They always think that their way is right, my way or no way. Come on, all those things are in the heart. That's why the Bible says you have to be vigilant and guard your heart and not allow the devil to sow the wrong seeds, the wrong thoughts in your heart. There are some people who think they are better than everybody else, but it's just in the heart. So your heart has to change. You have to cry to God. You have to pray. That God, you have to change my heart. God, you have to change my mind. God, you have to change, you know, my thinking. Glory be to God. So don't um, think your way into depression. You know, I, I, I once struggled with depression in my life, but I thank God he gave me the victory. And I won the victory through the word of God by standing on the word and speaking the word and declaring the word on my life because the word is powerful enough to defeat toxic thoughts. You can never defeat uh, the temptations of the enemy without the word of God. Because when Jesus was tempted, you used the word to overcome, uh, you know, temptation. So now, you know, because when you, you can actually feel depression creeping on you. You can feel, sometimes it starts as sadness. Sometimes you start by looking at yourself saying, oh, I lack this, I don't have this. You know, the quickest way to get depressed is to count your problems rather than counting your blessings. When you start counting your problems and your inadequacies, you know, you are going to quickly end up into, uh, dep in depression. So you have to realize that, uh, you know, when depression is creeping on you, come on, uh, you know, do what I do. I just say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Glory be to God. The Lord has made this day. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. I refuse to be sad. And I refuse to be depressed. I, re I, I resist depression. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee away from you. Resist depressing thoughts because everything starts as a thought. And if you buy the thought, then you're going to end up being depressed. So, you know, cut it out at thought level. Glory be to God. Our Father says we cannot stop birds from flying over our heads, but we can stop them from nesting. We cannot stop birds from flying over our heads, but we can stop them from nesting. We cannot stop evil thoughts from coming into our minds. All the time, evil thoughts are coming into our minds. Thoughts, tempting thoughts, you know, depressing thoughts, they come in. Come on, but don't allow them to nest. Come on, evict the thought. As, as the moment, come on, you, you, you find that thought creeping into your mind, 
creeping into your mentality, come on somebody, then evict the thought. Then send it back to the sender who is the devil. Cut it off at thought level. A child of God, feed what you want to grow and starve what you want to die. Feed what you want to grow and starve what you want to die. You know, you have to, especially on lockdown, a lot of people are just watching movies. Oh, I'm, I'm watching movies. People are watching the whole series in one day. Come on, a lot of that stuff on TV is ungodly. There's nothing wrong with watching TV. There's nothing wrong with watching movies. It's, it's what you are watching. Come on, you can't watch people cursing the name of Jesus and expect that when we pray, the name of Jesus is going to heal you. When you hear people cursing through the name of Jesus and, and nothing happens, then it's going to be hard for you to believe, come on somebody, that something is going to happen and you're in trouble and we call on the name of Jesus. Come on, watching negative, watching naked people, watching uh, people sleeping around, come on somebody, what, what, you, you are feeding last. You are feeding last. It starts as a thought. The desire to watch pornography, it starts as a thought. And those things are, are going to force you to start masturbating and things like that. So, you know, feed what you want to, to, to die. Uh, I mean, feed what you want to grow. Starve what you want to die. If you want lust to, to die, stop feeding it. Come on, somebody. If you want anger to die, stop feeding it. You know how you feed anger sometimes is you're always shouting at the dishes or you are always banging doors. What are you doing? You are feeding anger or you are, you are, you are shouting at the screwdriver. Come on, somebody. Uh, we, we <laughs> Glory be to God. When it misses the nail, you shout at the armor. Come on, what are you doing? You are practicing anger. Glory be to God. When you're always calling yourself names, oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, you are practicing anger. Are you getting what I'm saying? Feed what you want to grow. Starve what you want to die. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Feed the positive. Feed the good. And starve the toxic. Starve the negative. Starve the, the, pessimis the pessimistic. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want you to watch your... You watch what you allow to come through your eye gates and your ear gates. Watch what you allow to come through your eye gates and your ear gates because it will become thoughts. Watch your thoughts, they will become words. Watch your words, they will become actions. Watch your actions, it will become behavior. Watch your behavior, it will become character. Watch your character, it will become your destiny. So everything starts. What are you feeding in your mind? Come on, you know, if you are feeding horror movies in your mind, that's why you can't sleep with the lights off. You know, why, why, why are you watching those horror movies? They are putting fear in you. Glory be to God. That's why our Father says, listen, if you are not strong, don't watch the news. If you are not strong, because, you know, it's going to feed the fear in you. If you don't have enough word to counter all the negative news that's going around, it's going to feed fear in you. Thoughts are dangerous. I remember one time, you know, I went into the kitchen and went into the fruit bowl and, and I just grabbed the fruit. I didn't even think about washing it. And, you know, I started eating. Then my wife came in. She said, I hope you wash that, you wash that fruit <laughs> uh, because it, I, I, I didn't wash the fruits. And you know what the devil said? The devil says, Corona is here. <laughs> You got Corona. Rona is in the neighborhood. <laughs> Come on, I have. To, I, I had. I had to cast down that thought. I had to evict it out of my mind. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. So that's how the devil uh, troubles us with thoughts. Then our Father says here, thoughts can trouble a woman who did abortion. Thoughts can trouble a woman who did abortion. So if you did abortion, you know, you don't have to be troubled by thoughts. Just go and confess it and, 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 and you know, and, and pray with the counselor. And the guilt and the condemnation will go away and the devil will stop troubling you. The Bible says if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You know, number two, thoughts can trouble a man with a case waiting to be judged. Thoughts can trouble a man with a case waiting to be judged. I remember when I, uh, you know, I, I was caught by the cops driving without a license. And, you know, I had to go to court 
uh, to stand before the magistrate. Let me tell you something. <laughs> My thoughts troubled me. I was in court every minute, every week, every, every, <laughs> I mean, every day. Come on, somebody. I was in court before the actual court date. And the devil was showing me the worst case scenario. He would show me in prison, uh, you know, prison riots breaking out. <laughs> Come on. But what I did is, I asked God to forgive me. I knelt. I asked God to forgive me for breaking the law. And when I asked God to forgive me, uh, you know, I, I just didn't slap faith on it to say, oh, by faith, I won't be convicted. I was wrong. I was breaking the law. So I knelt. I asked God to forgive me. And God said, I've forgiven you and I'm going to exonerate you. So when I went before, uh, you know, the magistrate, you know, the magistrate said, I'm just going to give you a warning. I'm not going to charge you. You are not going to have a criminal record. So I, I can identify with this. I know I got some witnesses out there, whether you got a labor case going on or something like that. Thoughts can trouble you because the devil always shows you the worst case scenario. Number three, thoughts can make you sick. There are some people who are sick because of their thoughts. Thoughts, number four, thoughts can cause you to have high blood pressure. Some people have BP because of their thoughts, because of thinking toxic thoughts, and those toxic thoughts are releasing toxins in their body. They are contami it's contaminating their health. It's destroying their health. Thoughts of worry, come on. Thoughts of anxiety. Dr. Steve said, worry is like a rocking chair. Gives you something to do, but gets you nowhere. Jesus said, you cannot change anything by worry. And a lot of things that we worry uh, never come to pass. So all that is toxic to your health, toxic to your body. Thoughts can cause you to have a stroke. Thoughts can cause you to have a stroke. There was a man, he kept going on, going, he was a teacher, kept going to the office, uh, government office to receive his salary, and they'll tell him, no salary, no salary, no salary. And he went one time, they told him no salary again. And, you know, he, he just put his hand on, on his head and he had a stroke because of thoughts. Thoughts can cause you to commit suicide, you know, when it comes to committing suicide, a lot of people whom we help overcome these type of thoughts, they are always telling us that I'm hearing voices saying, jump in front of that car. I'm hearing voices saying, you know, go, go to the sea and, 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 and throw yourself in the sea. Hearing voices, throw yourself outside the sky rise building. Come on, somebody. That voice is the voice of the devil. That voice is the, is the voice of demons. Suicide is not the answer because suicide is a permanent uh, solution for a temporal problem. And when you commit suicide, you go to hell because you reject the sacrifice that Jesus made by dying for you, dying for your life so that you might enjoy life. And you are saying, if I die for myself, I can save myself. Yet it's, you can, no one can save themselves. It's only Jesus who can save us. So when you commit suicide, you are saying, I can save myself. Don't make a permanent solution based on a temporal situation. The Bible says everything you see is temporal. Glory be to God. But what you don't see, come on, is, is eternal. Everything you see, come on, this too shall come to pass. This salary cuts shall come to pass. This having not enough food shall come to pass. This, come on somebody, uh, glory be to God, having, uh, you know, uh, all, all this not uh, being sent on unpaid leave, all this, come on somebody, it shall come to pass. It's not temporal. Don't take your life based on a problem that is temporal, based on a problem that is passing. That's why the psalmist said, I'd almost fainted unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Child of God, believe you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thoughts can cause you to lose your marriage. Thoughts can cause you to lose your marriage. You can lose your marriage by being over-possessive, by being too controlling, and some by being suspicious, you know, without tangible evidence, or stubborn and refusing to change. If you are a wife or a husband who's so stubborn that you are stuck in your ways and you refuse to change, 
you lose your marriage. Come on, somebody. That's why our father says don't entertain small problems because, or small weaknesses or small flaws because they are going to become strongholds. They are going to become big problems. That's why the Bible says, catch us the little foxes that spoil the vine because everything starts small, but it doesn't remain small. Weaknesses start small, but they don't remain small. Come on, somebody. Flaws start small, but they don't remain small. It's going to grow big. That's why you need to deal with it when it's too small because one day it's going to embarrass you on social media. One day you're going to come out of the news. There is a lady who was an, an accountant, and, and she started by stealing three U.S. dollars. And she continued stealing, and in 20 years, she had stolen three million U.S. dollars, and the company was on the brink of bankruptcy. Come on, by stealing little by little. Come on, so don't entertain those little habits. Yes, I, I see some Christians who steal. You, you are a Christian, but you steal, you are stealing money from other people, you are stealing food from other people. Don't steal. It's better to ask. It's better to pray and to depend on God. It's better to trust God. That's why Jesus said when you pray, say, Our Father, give us today our daily bread. The Bible says it is required, glory be to God, in stewards that one must be faithful. We are stewards of God's wealth. We are stewards of God's blessing, and we have to be faithful. Don't steal your tithe. You have to be faithful. The Bible says you give 10%, not 7% or 6%. Glory be to God. So, you know, you have to deal with, with that mentality of taking things that are not yours. You start stealing in the head. Then you're going to end up stealing uh, in life. Come on, and one day we'll see you on BBC or one day we'll see you, we'll read you in H Metro. <laughs> Come on, somebody. So, you know, you can destroy your marriage, come on, by harboring thoughts of unforgiveness and resentment as well. There's no one who's perfect. We have to forgive. So, you know, you can, thoughts can cause you to lose your marriage. Number eight, thoughts can cause you to have sleepless nights, tossing and turning, tossing and turning. Come on, because you are worried, because you are anxious, because you are stressed out. Thoughts can cause you to have sleepless nights. Thoughts can put fear in you. Thoughts can put fear in you. Come on, somebody. Like I told you that the enemy was saying, because you ate this fruit without washing it, you have coronavirus. Come on, that put fear in me. But uh, come on, I resisted the fear. And I resisted the lies of the enemy. Because I know that the angels of the Lord encamp about me, and they deliver me because I fear God. And no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. That's what I said. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thoughts can cause you to have blackouts. You can faint. You can have blackouts sometimes. And when you gain consciousness, you say, what happened? Where I am? You don't know where you are. You don't know what happened. Come on, because of thoughts. Thoughts can, co can change the color of your face. Thoughts can cause you to fight with people, thinking that people hate you, yet they don't hate you. Thoughts, come on somebody, can cause you to have negative attitudes. Negative attitudes, come on, starts with negative thoughts. So, you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, we have the mind of Christ. Child of God, you have the mind of Christ. When the devil brings a tempting thought, say, I have the mind of Christ. When the devil brings, uh, you know, a thought of insufficiency or lack, say, I have the mind of Christ. When the devil shows you an image of you getting fired, say, I have the mind of Christ. Or showing you losing your job or showing you not making it through the end of the month, say, I have the mind of Christ. The devil shows you that you are a failure. Say, I have the mind of of Christ and 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to verse 4 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to verse 4 it says for uh, you know though we are in the flesh we don't fight against the flesh uh, and it says that our weapons of warfare are not carnal but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds come on you can pull down that stronghold you can pull down that stronghold of inferiority complex come on you can pull down that stronghold of anger come on you can pull down that stronghold of jealousy that stronghold of envy come on you can pull down uh, that that stronghold of toxic negative 
negative thoughts, that stronghold of depression and despair, that stronghold of suicidal thoughts, you can pull it down, pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations. Imaginations are in the mind. Strongholds are in the minds. And everything that exalts itself uh, and, and, and against the, the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Knowledge is in the mind. Thoughts are in the mind. Child of God, don't let the devil control your mind. Today, evict the devil out of your mind. Today, rebuke the devil. Today, kick the devil out. Our Father says, don't entertain the devil. Kick the devil out. If the devil says, kill yourself, say to the devil, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. When the devil says, you will never get married, say to the devil uh, that, you know, uh, uh, God grants to me the desires of my heart. If the devil says, you are ugly, say, no, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, somebody. Some of you, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you fight so hard to be a size four or to be a size six. That is unhealthy. Glory be to God. Just make sure you are healthy. Amen. Don't, don't try to compete with supermodels. They get paid for that. They live for that. Just make sure you are healthy. Come on. Uh, don't look at yourself and despise your body and say, you know, because I don't have a six pack, I'm not handsome. Come on. Some people get paid for that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just make sure you're exercising, you're healthy and come on you are eating right come on somebody and 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 don't allow the devil to always show you what you lack come on somebody don't count your legs don't count come on somebody your defeats don't leak wounds come on somebody count your blessings and it will surprise you to see what the lord has done in your life and philippians chapter 4 verse 8 as we conclude philippians chapter 4 verse 8 glory be to god Hallelujah. Tell yourself, I'm going to make it. Tell yourself, I refuse to be depressed. I might be rock bottom financially. I might be rock bottom career-wise. Come on, somebody. I might not have money, but I'm going to make it. God knows the plans that he has for me. Come on, the devil attacks you with a thought. Fight back with the word of God. You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with the word of God. The devil would tempt Jesus. And Jesus would say, it is written. He tempts Jesus again. Jesus would say, it is written. He tempts Jesus again. Jesus says, it is written. Child of God, whatever the devil tempts you with, come on somebody, say, it is written. Come on, speak Isaiah 26 verse 3. He knows, come on, God uh, keeps me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on him for I trust in him. I trust in the Lord forever. I trust in the Lord Jehovah because he is everlasting strength. Come on, somebody. Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Come on, somebody. Meditate on things that are true. Meditate on things that are noble. Meditate on things that are just, that are pure, things that are lovely. Come on, think about things that are lovely. Come on, getting out of debt is lovely. Come on, come on, building your own house is lovely. Come on, getting promoted at work is lovely. Come on, enjoying your wife, enjoying your husband, enjoying your children is, come on, is lovely. Th meditate on things. Think on things that are lovely. Focus your mind. Come on, somebody, on these things. Glory be to God. Whatever things are of good report, whatever things are virtuous and praiseworthy, think on these things, meaning, if you are thinking things that are not listed here, that are not in this category, you are thinking of the wrong thing. You are thinking of, of, of devil thoughts. You are thinking uh, thoughts from the kingdom of darkness. Glory be to God. So you have to take control of your mind. Come on, take charge of your mind. Come on, speak the word of God. The devil throws a negative thought. Come on, you fight back. Uh, with the word of God by speaking the word of God. Think on things that are pure. Don't think about sin. So one of the lies of the devil is to tell you that you will never overcome drinking. You will never overcome smoking. You will never overcome pornography. You will never. Come on, those are the lies of the devil. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror. The Bible says thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 6, 14 sin shall not rule over you. Sin shall not have dominion 
dominion over you. Come on, because you are not under the law anymore. You are under grace. Sin shall not rule over you. Uh, depression shall not rule over you. Come on, you need to look at sickness and say, sickness, you shall not rule over me. Depression, you shall not rule over me. Suicidal thoughts, you shall not rule over me. Inferiority complex, you shall not rule over me. Lack of confidence, you shall not rule over me. Pessimistic negative thoughts, you shall not rule over me. Glory be to God, because I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. The devil is always speaking to you. It's time that you speak back. The devil is always saying stuff. It's time that you speak back the word of God to the devil. Glory be to God. From today, control your mind. From today, take charge over your mind. From today, come on, think on purpose. Don't just think whatever comes in your mind. Don't just believe whatever the devil tells you. Come on, stand on the word of God and believe the word of God. Come on and use the word of God to counter the onslaught to counter uh, the, 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 the thoughts that the enemy throws at you, the toxic thoughts that the enemy throws at you. Glory be to God. We, are, we want to detoxify our minds. Glory be to God. We want to eradicate, eradicate mental toxins, eradicate lies from the devil, eradicate ungodly, wicked imaginations. Come on. Eradicate uh, you know, hatred, eradicate uh, bitterness, er eradicate ignorance. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. And say, I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. I want to pray for some people. Uh, the Holy Spirit impressed on my heart to pray for people who are depressed, to pray for people uh, who have mental health issues. I'm going to pray for you now in the name of Jesus. I command you to be free. Devil, loose my brother, loose my sister. I plead the blood of Jesus against you in the name of Jesus. Suicidal thoughts, I command you to go. Thoughts of sadness, thoughts of depression, I command you to go. Thoughts of despair, I command you to go. And I command you to be healed from that mental illness. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed from that mental illness, all types of mental illness, schizophrenia, all types of mental com, com, uh, uh, excessive, uh, uh, you know, behavior. Uh, you know, I command you to be healed, uh, excessive, uh, uh, you know, thoughts. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. Wicked thoughts and godly thoughts. I command them to lose you thoughts of perversion. I call, you, are, you are being set free right now in the name of Jesus. Be free in Jesus' name and receive healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Headaches are being healed. Joints are being healed. Muscles are being healed. Veins, arteries, organs are being healed in the name of Jesus. Be whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Someone you've got a headache that's like cracking you over here. It's like a crack, you know, excruciating pain on one side. Come on, somebody. You are being healed in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Someone you had a crack on your spinal cord. You are being healed. Come on, cracks are being healed. Come on, fractures are being healed. Come on, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Born fractures are being healed. Oh, glory be to God. Born deformities are being healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now. Listen, if you are not born again, uh, if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you know, don't just go with the healing. Come on. Now it's time to receive the healer. Glory be to God. And if you are backslidden, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer after me. God loves you. He sent his son to die for you. Glory be to God. You can receive Jesus. And when you receive Jesus, come on, you can enjoy life. Come on, he will help you. You know, fight all those battles, all those struggles. Jesus will be your victory. He will be your hope. He will be your everything. So pray with me this prayer. If you are committing uh, to Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you are backslidden, you are, you, are, you are a prodigal son, prodigal daughter, you are saying, I'm coming home. Listen, I wasn't born a preacher. I was born a sinner. I was a sinner, but Jesus, he saved me. Along the way, I backslid and I rededicated my life to the Lord and he received me and he forgave me. So pray after me. That can be your story today. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit and I accept that I'm a sinner, but I come to you and I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came on earth and died for my sins 
And on the third day, I believe the Lord Jesus rose again. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to wash me with your blood. I ask you to cleanse me in the name of Jesus. I open the door to my heart. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come in and be the Lord and the master and the savior of my life. Lord Jesus, I thank you that I'm forgiven. I thank you that now I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God praise. Give God worship. Give God honor. Listen, if God healed you, if God touched you, let us know in the comments. Amen. Let us know in the comments. I see someone, you have like a growth from the inside on the back of your neck or your neck is swollen. It's like it's swollen or it's like there is a lump here. Come on, the Lord is healing you. Abnormal growths come on on the head. They are being healed. Just weird pimples that popped out on your head. They are being healed. Come on, if the Lord has healed you, let us know in the comments. If you got born again, if you got saved, listen, click where it says, I, 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 I committed my life to Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you were blessed. Amen. Uh, listen, we're going to have, um, there, are, there are a lot of programs tomorrow. Uh, make sure you are where you are supposed to be and attending the program you are supposed to attend, starting with the men's prayer at 5 a.m., uh, you know, uh, children's church. Uh, in the evening, there is Middle East leadership uh, training. Glory be to God. So make sure you are where you are supposed to be. I believe girls have got something going on. GOQ has something going on. So make sure, glory be to God, that you don't miss anything. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let the love of the Father the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. You are coming out of debt. I declare you're going to have savings even in the midst of the drought, even in the wilderness, you're going to have savings. You're going to get promoted, receive your promotion. You're going to get an increment. Come on, receive your clients. You will meet your targets. Come on, you supersede. Come on, you excel beyond the target. In the name of Jesus, your job is looking for you. You are not looking for a job. Glory be to God. I speak uncommon favor. Come on, I speak covenant privileges. And I speak preferential treatment over your life. In Jesus' name, that money you are getting, it will be enough. And the money is going to come into your account. Even if they say we have cut off certain percentage, it's going to come into your account. Come on, somebody, according to what you should be earning, according to what is on the contract. Come on, believe God. It will only happen if you believe. It will only happen if you take it by faith. Come on, somebody say, I take it, I take it, I take it, I take it. Somebody say, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. Come on, take your job. Don't say, I'm going to get a job. Start saying, I have a job. Start saying, I'm employed. Come on. Glory be to God. We love you. Come on, God bless you. Though we are not with you physically, come on, we are together in the spirit. Amen. Have a good one. God bless you. Arios, amigos. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory.